It's Banana Slime, here of a new series, Top Ten Lists. Uh, so I really like Top Ten Lists, so I decided I'd make a series on them because they're awesome. And as you notice, with Top Ten list, usually one person comes up in the, with an original Top Ten List idea, and like all the other Top Ten List channels kind of copy them, but I came up with something completely original. Top Ten Video Game Consoles, The Least Amount of Games, by Banana Slime. And some rules. I know when game consoles first came out, like Pong and stuff, the games were programmed into it, so those will not be allowed to enter because those were programmed with just like one game in it. Though I do have one exception that I just had to in it, I just had to put into it. And so let's get into it. Number ten, the Fairchild, uh, the Fairchild Channel F, nineteen seventy six. This is a very revolutionary channel. Because it was the very first video game console to use game cartridges. So multiple games could be on one console. So it was the first one out of that era of just normal, uh, well, just games programmed into the console. It came out just before the world-famous Atari 2600. It failed because it only had 26 games ever made, while the Atari had 900. Uh, I give it props because it was the first one to ever use cartridges. But it came out right before the ni Atari, which had 900 games. So, yeah, kind of a fail on their part. They could have been a great if they'd just done more games. Number 9. The Apple Pit Pin, 1995. Apple plus console equals ultimate failure. Apple decided it would be a great idea if they decided to make a game console, which... I admit that could be great, but they did it horribly. It only had 22 games, but I don't really consider Mr. Potato Head Saves Veggie Valley a real game. So, yeah, that was literally a game on that console. And this is 1995. We'd already gone to the real age of gaming. Why did you have to do this, Apple? Why? Number 8. The Virtual Boy. Oh, uh, where do I even begin? Nintendo had no idea what they were doing, and they just completely failed their faces off. Uh, they'd done so many good things. In 1995, they had to pump out the Virtual Boy. This thing was horrible. It was a piece of bad word. It, it, you had to like mount it on a table, and you had to lean your neck forward and give yourself neck cramps. They couldn't move, or you would mess it up. And it had a super short battery life. And it was super expensive, like seven hundred dollars. But it only it, to make it cheaper, so it wasn't like thousands of dollars. It only had one color, red. Red was the only color that you could see on the console. What were they even thinking? It also had a really small library, only twenty-two games. But only fourteen of them were actually released in the U.S., which is where I am. So I'm saying that's pretty notable. I'm pretty sure. Uh, at least uh, the other ones were released in Japan, so... Japan, you guys got the rest of the games, but that's no real upside for you. Uh, so, all in all, it's a pretty horrible console. Number seven. The Tiger Game Con in 1997. For some reason, they say it's pronounced the GameCom instead of the Game.com. This system with Internet... Capabilities only had 21 games. Started sure, internet, but you had to get a whole new modem, uh, and you had to get a specific one by the Tiger Company, and it was a bad modem. You could barely even connect to the internet. It was horrible. Uh, you had 21 games, which is just less than the Virtual Boy and the Fair Game. It would be number 10 on the list if at least two of its nine unreleased games were released, because 21 plus 2 is 23. So, so close. They could have been number 10 on this list. In its defense, it was the first touchscreen console. So, they kind of, they had a good idea, but they did it horribly. Number 6. The Mattel Hyperscan from 2006. This system actually had something that was really cool about it. You could actually buy cards, like playing cards, that had little devices in them that when you scanned them, hence the name hyperscan, it actually took 
the things and put them into your game. So basically, there's DLCs mixed of trading cards, which, in my opinion, that is amazing. DLCs are cool, but if they also came with their own freaking trading card game, that's two in one. Why haven't we thought of this yet, world? Uh, I mean, like, that's a really good idea. That seemingly, since they were saying with the program that actually made it, that games could basically be infinite. You could just keep making new content and putting them in new playing cards, which is amazing. But even these cool add-ons couldn't save it from the fact that it only had five games. So, you're kind of out of luck, Mattel. Sorry. Number five. The Gizmondo from 2005. My gosh, this thing was... Look, and it's pretty bad. It actually claimed it was the most powerful handhold console ever. And like right after that, the DS came after and probably just blew it away. Only 25,000 were ever sold. And because of that, the company went bankrupt only after eight games were created. Well, it sucks to be them. <laughs> Number four. The Channel F System 2, 1979. Well... As you can guess, the Fairchild Channel F, which was number 10 on the list, could not accept that they'd lost to Atari. They tried to secure a victory by making this console, though it was a big failure also. It got only, it only gave got six games before the company just decided to give up. They were like, we're not going to beat Atari. Let's just give up now before we go bankrupt or something. So... They tried to get the revenge, but no, they failed. Number three, the NEC Super Graphics. This console was doomed to fail. There were only five games for the system. And you know what was horrible? Each game was $110, which is 170 today. The sad thing is this is the sequel to a very popular console, the TurboGrafx-16. The game was backwards compatible with the old Turbo Graphics games, so I kind of had to cheat the rules that said no really early consoles to make it number three. Because there's a saying and really notable I had to put for number two, and since it was backwards compatible, though it had so few games, I just, I just kind of needed to give it number three. It didn't deserve number two. You get it, right? You probably do. Number two. The Magnavox Odyssey 100 and 200. Magnavox was the company that actually invented the Pong type game, but it was called Tennis. And Atari came, it became popular off of Pong, and Magnavox wanted their revenge. The 100 version of their Odyssey had two games Tennis and Hockey. They were both Pong, eh, just basically copies of Pong games, just kind of retextured. And two hun the 200 had an additional game that I couldn't quite figure out what the game is, but I'm assuming it was another uh, Pong game. This happened because Magnavox actually believed that Pong would be the only video game ever. They thought it would just be Pong, and then it, video games would just die off forever. And boy, were they wrong. It mostly failed because it actually it couldn't keep score, so you had to do that yourself. And since the two games were basically textured, they were essentially one game. But there's this, uh, even though that they were essentially just one game, uh, and well, they also failed because there were tons of Pong knockoffs on the market already. So they just looked like another knockoff. And they were essentially one game, but it says two in numbers, and there's one I just had to put for number one. Even though I would technically call them one game, probably even like half a game by this, by like normal standards. Well, by today's standards, it would be like one one millionth of a game. Yeah, but yeah, they failed pretty badly. They even came up with a three hundred and four hundred version, but then they kind of just gave up. Number one, the R D I Halcyon, Halcyon, Halcyon. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. This is a horrible system. It cost $2,500. $2,500. Which, if you adjust for inflation, is about $5,000 today. The worst part, it had two 
games. Yes, you spent about $2,500, which is about $5,000 today, and then you got two games. Uh, sort of the last entry had really one game, but the price tag of this made me just really need to put this at number one. I just can't believe there's a thing. I still have a bit trouble believing that this is actually true. I'm, I think maybe my website was lying to me. This, I I have hard, a hard time believing that this is actually a thing. Just, I don't know. I can't even believe this. So, subscribe to more on this channel and join the Slimeling Rebellion, where we rebel against the haters, the grievers, the spammers, and those who mess up our gaming experience. This has been fun for me to make this top 10. I believe I'll be making more in the future. And for those who believe that I uh, made some of this up, here are uh, my sources for this. All the sources for the top 10 list. And believe me, uh, this I might have gotten a few things wrong, but just tell me in the description if there's anything that I might have missed. And believe me, this is a hard one because I came up with this idea originally. I don't think anybody else has really done a list on this. So, uh, it took me a while to research them that had so few games. I wanted to uh, uh, include the Philips CDI just because it was so horrible. But unfortunately, it just didn't make the list. It actually had more games than I expected. So, if you enjoyed that, leave a like. Until next time, I am Banana Slime. Goodbye.